And we are back once again. It's a lovely time. Now, we are going to go into one of our favorite segments. And it is, ladies and gentlemen, was it worth it? And today we have Jeremy with the topic. So, Jeremy, take it away. Yeah, so I want to apologize in advance for being the one that's babbling. But I have a game. Uh, I have a game that was released, I mentioned before, June 5th. It is Command & Conquer Remastered. Now, before I get into the was it worth it, guys, I think I talked to you guys before, um, I ran across a review that was terrible, and I wanted to kind of address it because it's one of the first five reviews someone that may be interested in this game would come across. And I think it's it's important to get full context and actual and actual information about something. Okay. So really quickly, this is a, a review wrote by, if you couldn't believe it, The Washington Post. That's where I go for my game reviews, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, the writer, I don't know his name, uh, not really important. Uh, but I just want to I just want to address some things. So one of the first things he writes is, uh, quote, first introduced in the mid-1990s, Command & Conquer breathed new life into the real-time strategy genre. Since then, the genre has only become flashier and more intricate. Uh, as a result, the remastered versions of Tiberium Dawn and Red Alert, released Friday by Electronic Arts, feel a bit spare in this day and age. Players still command different entry. Actually, let me go back. So he ends it there, released Friday by Electronic Arts, And it feels a bit spare in this day and age. Um, So for one, Breathe New Life, I guess. The game Dune 2 came out before then. And it was also that same type of game. If he wants to say that, fine, I guess. Um, He also goes on to say the graphics are sharper, which they are. And the controls and interface are slightly tweaked. Okay. Uh, But at the core of the remaster is just two games treading the same ground they broke years ago. Um, Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, I will stress to you that this is a remaster, not a remake. So at the core of the game, it will be the same that it was 25 years ago, Uh, just as you had any other remaster that has happened. Not similar to what, like, Corey was speaking about a few levels ago with the Final Final Fantasy VII remake. That's a remake. So it plays and feels a little bit different, but the overall theme and story is still intact. It's just kind of a reimagining of that stuff. This writer, he goes on to talk about how it's it's you know it's a point and click interface. You click to build the bu- the build the building you want. You click you know to build the unit you want or where you wish it to go or what you want it to shoot, and it carries out your commands, which is fine, but fine isn't good. And uh, he was left wondering why the remaster was made at all. Uh, first, what? Uh, secondly, uh, let's put it this way. Let's talk about some actual things. So what might not be well known is that a lot of time with older games, source code isn't intact if you go to look back for it. Uh, This was well known with Silent Hill. When they tried to do an HD version of Silent Hill uh, 2 and 3, they didn't have all the code for it. So So the development team that took it on had to fill in that code. And because of that, the game suffered from it. It's the same thing with this one. They had to go back in and fill in source code because they didn't have all of it. So they were going to be doing some work there anyway. Uh, Secondly, the resolution is an issue. I'm sure you guys do know that resolution in 1995 is different than resolution in 2020. It is? Surprisingly. Oh, wow. Yeah, surprisingly, there's a lot more pixels we can work with nowadays. So you have to remap and rescale things accordingly. You can't do that with the old game because it wouldn't wouldn't map to that. It was made for a 4-3 aspect ratio on CRT TVs or CRT monitors. It's not going to work the same way as it would now, right? And a matter of fact, uh, when I talked, that little spiel I talked about with Emperor, I'll be having some footage on a clip we put on YouTube. You'll see what an old game looks like that hasn't been updated. Uh, There are also 20 new cover songs in addition to the original remaster soundtrack that was made. So that's another reason why the, why the you know, the remaster works there. Um, he goes on to say, you know, that it's pretty much just a stunning. It's not really that stunning of a remaster. It doesn't really apply. Um, there's other games that have been remastered better. It's basically just the same experience with more palatable visuals. Um, again, it's a remaster. Right. Uh, Mist. Have you seen Mist recently? Doesn't look that great. Have you seen Doom recently? Doesn't look that great. And we're talking about the originals, not the newer versions. But then he gets into a bit about the story, how uh, 
as you all know, if you guys have played Command and Conquer games or if you haven't, there's these missions that you go on. These missions have maps, just like every other RTS. And in between those are, they call them FMVs. They're basically live action movies that play in between the missions that help build the plot, as well as animations. Well, they shot those in 1990-something, right, on, on digital cameras. So they don't scale up well, right? So he's talking about, hey, the, the references in it are outdated. The, the <laughs> videos look outdated and silly. I would like to point people as a point of reference to a classic movie, a classic film and cinema called Starship Troopers. Okay? Starship Troopers is laughably over the top. It's laughably, laughably militaristic. And that's for a reason. Because the movie was seeking to parody military, imperialistic, nationalistic culture. That's why. So, of course... These are outdated and they're silly. That's the point. In fact, it was one of the games, Red Alert, the catalyst for that game story is that Einstein goes back in time to the 1920s and goes full on Vegeta and teleports Hitler to the next dimension. That's what? that's, that's <laughs> the cat. Yeah, that's the catalyst of the story. So which which at which point is it not supposed to be silly? Um, just just a. Just a really weird thing. He goes on to criticize how a pilot mentions, you know, the, the country of Belarus is something you can attack. It's an important position in the Command and Conquer Tiberium Dawn version of the game. There's two games that come in this collection, Command and Conquer Tiberium Dawn and Command and Conquer Red Alert. Um, he's talking about how a pilot mispronounces a name. For one, okay. Uh, number two, he doesn't specify which campaign it's in. Is it Tiberium Dawn? Is it Red Alert? Is it the GDI campaign? Is it the Not campaign? Is it the Allies or the Soviets? Uh, come on, man. Not a good review. I got triggered by it, obviously, <laughs> because I hate misinformation. And the person that wrote it seemed like someone who just kind of played the game in passing and really didn't critically look at it. They didn't really care that much. Now, you know who does care. That is moi. So the question of, was it worth it? Short answer is, Yes, if you're into RTSs, if you're a C, if you're a Command and Conquer fanatic, right, um, or if you're thinking about getting into RTSs, one of the criticisms that have been made, that was made in this article, is that the gameplay is somewhat simplistic, and that's true. Again, 1995, um, but I think it's a good way for people to get into RTSs because if you want, if you want to graduate up to something more complex, like let's say uh, like a StarCraft. Um, like a Grey Goo, um, you know, maybe even some of the later Command and Conquer games, then I think starting out with something that has simplistic systems and strategies will, will help. You'll feel challenged, but you won't feel overwhelmed. Um, going into some of the pros of this game, the campaigns are as cheesy as remembered because they're the same thing, right? Uh, the music, the music, which isn't even mentioned in the review, is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I cannot stress enough how great the music is. And I'm someone that's more and more uh, tending to like Red Alert more than Command and Conquer because I like the, the kind of Cold War aspect of it a bit more from a thematic standpoint. Um, the, one of the big things that were talked about with this remaster is that they upscaled the graphics. If you didn't know, the original uh, assets were 320 pixels by 200 pixels. But of course, they should be able to port it to nowadays 2020. Uh, they went ahead and redrew everything and made it up to 4K upscale. So it's actually really cool. If you hit the space bar, you can actually change between the remastered new upscale graphics and the old school 320 by 200 it's pixelated graphics. It's, it's novel. It's a cool thing. It doesn't really add a lot. Um, the other thing they did, which is new, which you doesn't get why they did a remaster, is they had to completely rebuild the multiplayer. If you guys don't remember, the multiplayer uh, in the original Command & Conquer's used voiceover IP, and it was connected to Westwood Studios' server. They had to get rid of all that because Westwood Studios doesn't exist anymore. So they were able to rebuild the multiplayer from scratch. They introduced new multiplayer mo modes and skirmish modes. They introduced the quick match mode. The multiplayer is enjoyable. It's great. It's fast-paced. I played someone last night, and I destroyed them. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. If I can destroy someone, you guys have got a shot. Uh, let's go into some of the cons, though. So the FMV and the CG snippets, they don't look particularly good. Why? Because they were made in 1995. 
And no matter how much you do upscaling, it's not going to it's not going to fix all of it. Now, I think the way that EA chose to upscale it may be part of the issue because uh, EA decided to use an algorithm to upscale it rather than treat it themselves. And I think the algorithm treated some of the colors and contrast wrong and smoothness. And yeah, uh, not not that great. And also another con, the game has some balance issues at times. Guys to stand there and just get shot and die. <laughs> right? When you're trying to win a war, not great. Those same balance issues have been there. They contemplated going back and fixing them, but the game design is so tight that if they had did that, it would have messed up the entire flow of the game. So they had to leave the balance as is. Um, and then the last being is that the AI pathfinding is pretty bad. So if you're someone that gets easily frustrated by that stuff, either don't get it or strap in, right? Because you're going to get a lot of it. But overall, I would say that this game is worth it. It's 20 bucks. You get both games, Tiberium Red Dawn, Tiberium Sun, not Tiberium Sun, Command and Conquer Tiberium Dawn, and you also get Command and Conquer Red Alert, the original. Both games come with all the expansions. They also come with some missions that were exclusive to consoles. That's all packaging and included now. And it's $20. Uh, also a key... This game is published by EA. This game does not have any microtransactions. Hmm. All the content is there. There are no plans to get monetary recurrences happening through microtransactions. They may put out DLC. That's cool. Um, I would say the other big thing about this that you may be interested in is that they are making the source code available. So this is not only up there because it's great and it's remastered, but it's moddable. So there will be mods for this game. And I can't wait to see what the modding community comes up with because the modding community is just fantastic. Every single game I play on PC, I play with mods. I don't know how you can't, really. So um, that's all the, all the great things with this game. Some things that aren't great, but I just wanted to make sure I put out, was it worth it? Yes. Um, don't listen to that information. Go to Ars Technica. Go to PC Gamer. Go to someplace like that if you want to read a review. Do not go to the Washington Post. Terrible review. It was worth it. <laughs> 